Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have a very amazing and exciting chess game to share with you, where I played against the Torch chess engine, he is the number 2 chess engine in the world and is currently competing in the computer chess championship, this game is completely brilliant and astonishing as we invented a brand new chess opening, Torch played f5, sacrificing its bishop, and this game is full of genius and curiosity, so let's get started without wasting any time. Torch started the game with d4 and I responded with f5, initiating the Dutch defense, at this juncture, instead of playing pawn to g3 or c4 followed by knight to c3, Torch decided to go with e4, sacrificing the pawn right away, after the capture happened on the board, you can see that the f-file gets exposed with the open diagonal from the bishop to c4, controlling the diagonal, after knight to c3 happened on the board to attack the pawn. Some of you might be tempted to play pawn to d5 to secure your structure, but here comes queen takes h5 check, simultaneously attacking the pawn on d5, your structure will be burdened and weak, so, in this position, we play knight to f6 to protect that pawn, after bishop to g5 followed by g6 to develop the bishop and castle, torch played bishop to c4 to control the diagonal. A few moves ago, when torch played bishop to g5 to attack the knight, some might argue to push the pawn to d5, but that is a completely mistaken move because white can initiate an attack by capturing the knight and then playing queen to h5 check, after queen exchanges on d5, bishop to d6 may come to protect the pawn from the knight's attack, but here comes another approach, knight takes f6 followed by knight takes e4, consequently, white can play f3 to safeguard his knight. This position is completely favorable for white as he has two connected passed pawns, so, returning to the position, we see that pawn to d5 is not viable, this is why after g6, to develop the bishop and castle, we play bishop to c4 to dominate the light squares, torch is doing a very good job, but I am more experienced and senior, so I go with c6 to push my pawn to d5, I played c6 to stop the pawn push to d5 and simultaneously to prepare to push my own pawn to d5 or advance on the queen side by pushing my pawn to b5. Torch then played a very great move, which I appreciate, pawn to d5, it's a very appropriate and authentic move, stopping the pawn move to d5 or b5 and creating space on d4 for the knight or queen, at the present moment, the knight can jump right into the d5 square, so, I responded with e6, pressuring the pawn on d5, at this point, many chess players, almost 99%, might consider playing d6. But it is not the right approach, queen a5 can come to pressure the bishop, eventually followed by b6 and bishop to a6, allowing black to maintain his position and advantages, so, returning to the position, torch captured the pawn on e4, which is the best move, after castling, this opening is very reliable and cool to play, in the Dutch defense, we got this position, and some of you might be tempted to capture the pawn on e6, but black can respond with d5, forcing your bishop to move back, after a5. Black builds a strong pawn chain and advances pawns on the queen side, making the position difficult for white. Returning to the position, Torch decided to play an alternative move, d6, seizing and paralyzing black's position in the center, it also paralyzes three pieces on the queen side, White dominates the position with an active knight bishop and the bishop on c4, which plays a crucial role on the king side, after queen to a5 followed by bishop to d2, I mean, the knight is attacking the knight on e4, by playing queen to a5, black pressures both the bishop and king simultaneously. After queen to a5 and the bishop moves back, we have queen captures, captures, and here comes the cunning move, pawn to f4. It is a very risky and crucial move to consider in the game, Jesus, what on earth is going on? He played pawn to f4 right away, with a potential invasion to push the pawn to f5, at the present moment, the pawn is well protected by the bishop, and the light square bishop is playing a crucial role. This pawn on f4 is making a significant advantage for the white position, sieging and paralyzing black's pieces completely on the board, white wants to castle, and for now, Black is attacking the pawn on b2, would you take it or not? I capture the pawn on b2, and after the queen goes back to the f6 square, we have queen to f5 followed by queen to c5, at this juncture, 
You can see that Torch played an amazing and brilliant move. Can you find that move? Pause the video and try to figure out that move. What should White consider in this position? Noticing that the bishop is under attack, Torch ignored the bishop and went for the higher enlightenment, pawn to f5, first of all, the e-pawn cannot capture the pawn because it is pinned to the king, and if you dare to capture the pawn with your g-pawn, it will expose the g-file, after rook to b3 followed by rook to g3, exposing the black king, you can observe that the d6-pawn plays a crucial role in the center. The black king cannot escape from f7 to e8 because knight to f4 followed by a queen invasion on h5 can come, making it difficult for black to stay in the game. Some might even think of playing king to h8 to protect the bishop, by moving the rook to g8. But here comes the stunning move, bishop to h6, pressuring the bishop on g7, noticing that the queen cannot safeguard the dark square bishop, because the knight is controlling the d4 and c3 squares, some might even think of capturing the bishop on h6, but it will expose the dark square diagonal completely, allowing my queen to invade by moving to a1, checking the king. The king is paralyzed and effectively trapped, so after the bishop blocks, queen takes g7 will result in a checkmate. So let me share a beautiful quote in sudden with you. Discipline your mind to think positively, discipline your mind to see the good in every situation and look on the best side of every event. Going back to the position, we saw that g takes f5 is not viable, even rook takes f5 is not possible because it will lead to the same circumstances, rook to b3 followed by rook to g3 to get activated on this diagonal, so, I accept the bishop sacrifice on c4, and after the rook goes to f4 attacking the queen, the rook may come to g4 for future invasion, another rook also comes to the b3 square to get all the way to the right side of the board, so. After queen to d5 pawn capture and recapture happens on the board, rook to g4 follows to invade and attack the pawn, we have rook to f6 to protect the pawn, and it also blocks the bishop's diagonal, you can observe that the pawn on d6 plays a crucial and significant role in the center, causing 60% of black's pieces to be passive and frozen, which is completely advantageous for white, the bishop can arrive at c3, and the knight can jump into the f4 square. But torch chose to deploy and attack in another way, knight to c3, after the queen moves, knight to e4 comes to pressure the rook. The rook moves back, and you can see that the queen is the only piece protecting the pawn on g6, which is why after the knight moves back to g3 to attack the queen, some might think of playing queen to e5, but it is a completely poor move as I can capture your pawn on g6 followed by knight to a6, and after a couple of moves, bishop to h6 will arrive to attack your bishop, after the king moves, capture and recapture happen on the board, and queen to h4 check will follow. Consequently, the rook will arrive at the f1 square, making the position completely weak and vulnerable for black to control. It is completely favorable for white, and something like pawn to b5 can be played to activate the bishop and open up the rook file. I give this as a chess puzzle for you, try to figure out what white should play in this position to checkmate black in just 10 moves, Try to figure out that move and comment on this video, I will read your comments and, take it as today's chess puzzle. So, going back to the position, we saw that queen e5 or any natural looking queen move is not viable, this is why I decided to move my queen back to h7. After bishop g5 follows on the board, it becomes evident that he wants to play rh4 to trap my queen, noticing that the queen might be trapped, some may try to play bishop e5 to create some escape room for the queen, but after rook h4, the queen runs, the knight comes to e4, and after a sudden move, bh6 will come, forcing the queen to move. After queen e2, g4 happens on the board to attack the rook, knight to g5 will arrive to attack both of your pieces, as the queen moves, my knight will capture your rook, forcing your king to move from its home square, then I can launch a cunning move by playing rook f1, I mean queen takes e5, sacrificing the queen right away, noticing that queen g8 is not viable because rook f8 will lose your queen, after queen takes e5, rook f8 will follow, resulting in a checkmate and you will lose the game completely. So, 
Returning to the position, we saw that bishop e5 is not viable, some might even be tempted to play king f8, but it is a completely rubbish move as I can respond with rook h4, after the queen reaches the d3 square to attack the pawn, you have no options to consider, my knight will arrive at h5 to increase the pressure against the bishop. As the knight moves to e5, bishop takes e7 check will follow, followed by knight takes f6 check, you can see that this is a completely vulnerable situation for you, the king cannot move, he is trapped and the rook cannot move because it is pinned to the king, the bishop cannot move because you will lose your queen right away, this game is completely winnable for me, and black will lose the game completely. So, going back to the position, we observed both moves like bishop e5 or king f8, as we discovered, both moves were rubbish, after c5 happened on the board, to free up some space for the knight and by playing b6, it will provide open space for the rook and bishop, white played rook h4, forcing me to capture the rook, and he wins my queen, after his queen reaches the g4 square, it attacks the pawn on g6. The knight arrives at e5 and after b6 to develop the bishop and join the rook in the game, he played another cunning move, rook takes b6, sacrificing the rook because I cannot capture the rook, knight to c4 followed by rook to b1 and after some moves later, we have bishop c6 h3, and knight exchanges on the a5 square, rook to e1 arrives with the threat to play rook to e7, invading the 7th rank, I decided to block it with my bishop, but he is outperforming me. He sacrifices his rook on the e4 square, it is called an exchange sacrifice, at the end of the game, you can see that torch has a queen for two rooks, a bishop for a bishop. And he has two connected pawns on the king side, on the left side of the board, it is three pawns versus two pawns. So, let me share an inspirational quote with you. Your strength isn't defined by how much you can handle before you break, it's about how much you handle after you've been broken. After rook to b8 and rook to b2, a couple of moves later, he picked up the pawn, suddenly, we have bishop d4 and bishop exchanges on the board, it left two rooks and a queen. Although he has two connected pawns, it is completely winnable for him, torch played very authentically and brilliantly, I appreciate his moves and playing style, he is slowly developing the game, he has an outside passed pawn on the A-file, but you know what. Torch's brilliance is up and he is performing very well, he pushes his A-pawn, he pick up the pawn, but a couple of moves later, the check follows and the two rooks get on the B-file, noticing that I have two connected passed pawns, I decided to sacrifice my queen on the B-6 square, forcing you to capture, and my pawn reaches G-6, I mean, Torch's pawn reaches G-6, the black king is far away from there, Torch is completely winning the game, a couple of moves later, we have a rook check. Black, cannot stop the white pawns, suddenly, he promoted into a new queen. It is completely winning as I told you, another deep pawn is pushing, and a couple of moves later, it is a king-queen, and rook endgame, we have to play very strictly, otherwise, it may become a draw, we picked up the pawn, and slowly it becomes a checkmate on the b2 square. So, what a game. I hope you enjoyed it very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see you.